Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you're looking for PTCGO clothes, including the new Hidden Fate stuff, you can go ahead and check out the Town store. You can go ahead and use the OmniPoke code for an extra 5% discount. Moving on to today's video though, we are going to be looking at the fully revealed set of SM12 Ultra Genesis. This is uh, releasing in Japan on the 5th of September. It's going to be part of our Cosmic Eclipse set in November, which is meant to be, I think, one of the biggest sets of all time for us, which is exciting and worrying for me as well and for collectors and all sorts because it's going to be a big pain when it's a massive set. But that's kind of what Pokemon have got themselves into right now. You can see the poster boys of the set is going to be uh, the Palkia Dialga as well as Arceus. And I'm going to be going through my initial impressions of most of these. Usually this is just a rough estimate. I've had a quick glance through these, um, but I may be missing combos and stuff, etc. that I will get towards um, when we do the full set review of Cosmic Eclipse. But for now, I'm going to head down to the trainers. That's always where I like to begin, because that's my main point of interest. And we will start off with Tag Whistle. It's a trainer item that says search your deck for two or up to two tag team cards and put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. Now, the translation says tag team card, not tag team Pokemon. And there are tag team supporter cards that you can now get in this format. Uh, so Tag Whistle really reminds me of Holland Transceiver, which is a very old trainer. It may be more similar to something like Looker's Whistle in the uh, more recent times where it's an item card that can go ahead and help grab you a supporter card, which is awesome. Looker's Whistle could only grab Looker, which wasn't a great supporter card. Tag Whistle is going to give us the opportunity to get all sorts of supporters that you'll see later on in this video, as well as Tag Team Pokemon, because they're still Tag Team cards, of course. So a trainer card that gets you your main attacker and a guaranteed supporter, even if the supporter isn't phenomenal, is really good for you. So I think Tag Whistle is going to have a big impact on our format, as long as there are tag team decks out there and as long as the tag team supporters are good enough because this card is really good so yeah i think tag whistle is very exciting big consistency booster uh for tag team decks which is just even more support for tag teams um i don't know why this isn't like non-gx whistle but whatever <laughs> we'll just move on uh, we get unidentified fossil again we get island challenge amulet i also think this is an insane uh tool it says the max hit points of the Pokemon GX or EX, this card is attached to is reduced by 100. But if the Pokemon is knocked out by damage from the attacks of your opponent's Pokemon, they take one less prize card. So you're turning a GX into a non-GX, or you're turning a tag team into a regular GX Pokemon. So you're basically making your guy a glass cannon. That's basically how this uh, tool reads. There's really not much competition for tools out there right now. The choice band's gone, so basically no tools are relevant. Um, so being able to skew the prize trade with Island Challenge Amulet seems nuts. Like, really, really nuts. Um, yes, you have 100 less hit points, but really, if you're the one up trading because you're a Blacephalon that's now a one prizer like you don't even care right you just take those prizes and outrace people so this card seems super scary and I'm going to be interested to play with this guy because it seems like there are plenty of spots where you can benefit from this and it's going to be really ugly for your opponent to deal with uh, do bear in mind there's still things like uh, Lysander Labs in format so it's not like the be all and end all we can have ways around this um, but definitely an interesting card for sure. We have Beastite, a, another interesting tool card, um, which is coming into our uh, set that says, the attacks of the Ultra Beast this card is attached to do 10 more for each prize card you've taken um, on your opponent's active. So it's a tool that gets progressively better, uh, the better you do in the game, which makes it the definition of a win more card, um, which is a little bit, nerve-wracking but when you look at things in the past like muscle band was a crazy good card for the longest time before choice band was, was revealed um that card was just played in everything and this doesn't just say um opponents active ex or gx it's everything in the active so um you can definitely do some amazing shenanigans with this card um and 
this damage modifier, if you've only taken two prizes, is as good as Muscle Band for Ultra Beasts, and then just gets better and better towards the late game. So it's huge support for Ultra Beasts. I also think it's potentially very scary um, for Buzzmosa GX with its um, Beast Game GX attack, um, because now you can be Beast Gaming all sorts of things for two prizes to like close out the game. Like Your opponent can just have any non-GX on their board, basically. And if they're getting a plus 40 from this and a plus 30 from um, Beast Energy, ugh, that's very scary. There's a lot of things that are in range of Beast game just closing out the game. So that's really sick. I think Beastite will be a really nice include. Um, it may also be another thing that pushes like pure Beast Box decks, which even with Dragon Naga haven't really kicked off. Uh, there's been Checkmate builds, but there haven't been pure... Um, Ultra Beast builds and maybe Beastites can be the thing that brings it all together so their damage output is good enough. Let's have a look at some of these tag team supporters. We start off with Guzma and Halla. Now, the artwork, guys. Come on, Pokemon. You've got to do better than this. This is just in your face laziness. I'm so surprised that they're giving us these artworks. It's. I'd be embarrassed, <laughs> to be honest, to do something like this. It's like. The old, let me copy your homework, but don't let them see meme. But this is a real company doing this. And yeah, I do think that the concept of tag team supporters is super cool. And if Tag Whistle works, I'm going to be happy to play all these cards. But come on, man, give us new artworks. That's just shocking. <laughs> um, but we do have Guzmer and Halla. You search your deck for a stadium card, reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. And... Um, when you play this card, you may also discard two cards from your hand. If you do, you may also search your deck for a Pokemon tool and special energy card, reveal them and put them into your hand. So it has like a potential two-way effect um, if you choose to. Um, you can just play it to just grab a stadium if you want to, but the tag team part comes in. If you discard two from your hand, you can also go ahead and grab a tool and a special energy. Now, there are a few decks that might want to play this. Um, there's a few triple acceleration decks out there, like Behem, that might want to go ahead and grab itself something like a Slumbering Forest, a U-Turn board, and a 3CE. That sounds like a pretty big few cards that you try and look for with that archetype. And um, you are able to play like Lusamine in Behem as well, so you don't need to play many copies of this card. Um, I saw some expanded applications where you can go ahead and grab like Skyfield, um, Mega Ray, um, Spirit Link, and 3C as well. Things like that sound very cool. For the majority of decks in Standard, I don't think we necessarily need this so much. There aren't many powerful um, special energies out there right now. Uh, as I mentioned, there aren't that many powerful tools out there right now either, outside of like pivoting ones. Um, and stadiums, we can grab a stadium nav a lot of the time. So I think it's on the weaker side. I think it'll have its niches because it is so versatile. Um, but I do think it's quite an expensive supporter. Uh, having to discard two cards to grab a tool and a special energy isn't all that hot. So um, Also, at the same time, when you're looking at cards like this, you could just think, well, why don't I just increase my tool count or increase my supporter count or increase my special energy count first. Uh, do those things first and then think about adding this guy. But he covers enough bases that he may be worth playing a low count of. Especially when you play Tag Whistle. You can, like, if you play four Tag Whistle in a deck with, like, lots of these tag team supporters, you can just play, like, one of this guy and then access him for, like, the early turns. That might be another reason why he could shine. Uh, it's similar to, like, when you had Versus Seeker, you would play one-off supporters just because you can uh, make sure you use them at the right time. And Tag Whistle might make that more of a thing, which is pretty cool. Cynthia and Caitlyn, again copied artworks that we've seen with a new background it's kind of trash but uh, you're able to put a supporter card from your discard pile into your hand excluding Cynthia and Caitlyn um, or cards that you discard with its effects because it does have that secondary effect that says when you play this card you may discard one from your hand if you do draw three so it's a it's essentially the same as what's it called TV reporter um, but TV reporter allows you to discard after you draw your three um, so you can play this, draw three, but you also get a guaranteed supporter. So it's like draw four, because you're also recovering a supporter card from your discard pile and guaranteeing that you have the supporter that you want for next turn. So at the very least, this is better than TV Reporter. Obviously, TV Reporter isn't seeing play, um, but this card has discard synergy, and it guarantees you another supporter card, which I think is the most important thing. 
Um, you could think about this card in Lusamine looping decks as well, uh, because you can use Cynthia and Caitlyn to get back your Lusamine, and then you can use your Lusamine to get back Cynthia and Caitlyn. So instead of just doing a Lusamine loop, you can weave in Cynthia and Caitlyn and do the same thing as a Lusamine, um, but at the same time, you are also drawing cards. So there's some small application for these sorts of Lusamine loop decks. Um, this may be the new age Lusamine eventually when Lusamine does um, rotate. Obviously, this isn't infinite. They've actually added that text, but you can't get yourself back, which is oh, so good. Thank you, Pokemon, for doing that. Um, but this discard three and guaranteeing a supporter, I think it's just about good enough. Um, I think, especially because this card like draws cards. Yeah, it feels pretty good to like have a sort of chain of Cynthia and Caitlyn going because you can just keep getting back your other supporters. If they're continual draw cards, that sounds pretty good. Um, so yeah, I think this one definitely has an opportunity to be strong. Mallow and Lana uh, has the initial effect of saying switch your active with one of your bench Pokemon. And it has that secondary effect that says when you play this card, you can discard two from your hand. If you do, heal 120 from the new active Pokemon. So you do that switching effect and then you heal 120 to the new one. This compares pretty poorly to um, Tate and Liza for the most part. Um, that healing effect isn't that strong. We already have Great Potion and Mixed Herbs for the most part, which should outclass this. 120 is pretty reasonable for like decks trying to two-shot you, but I still think this isn't all that fantastic. Um, maybe it just adds up in decks that need um, extra pivoting outs with extra healing. Uh, maybe something like the Alolan Executor healing deck might need something like this, because um, you don't really want to play any switching cards. is not even that good in your deck. Because uh, you normally play things like um, Steven's Resolve and stuff in that list. So possibly having this over Tate and Liza might be worth it in some big tanky decks. Uh, but overall I think it weighs pretty poorly compared to Tate and Liza. Um, I think if all of these are searchable via the whistle though, that does definitely give them a bit more viability. Because then it's a much more searchable switch card, which is pretty cool. So something to bear in mind. We have Red and Blue, possibly the strongest of the bunch. Um... It's a very interesting uh, supporter for sure. And I'm pretty excited to start testing this one, to be honest. You get to search your deck for a Pokemon GX that evolved from one of your Pokemon in play and put it onto that Pokemon to evolve it. Um, so you can't use this the first turn. So it's not the same as a Wally. It's like an Evo Soda effect, um, really, uh, the first part. The second part of this is when you play this card, you can also discard two from your hand. If you do, search your deck for two basic energy cards and attach them to the Pokemon you evolved. Universal Energy Acceleration for Evolutions. That's really good. So we have Triple Acceleration Energy, and we have this card that can also power up attackers. That's so much burst potential for evolution cards, you have no idea. Uh, think about the Dragonite GX that does 270 for 5 energy. You could do that in a turn. You could go from Dragonair to Dragonite with red and blue, get 2 energies, then attach a 3 CE for turn, and just swing for 270. That's really cool. I like that they're trying to push evolutions. It's a shame they only push it for GX evolutions, but still, it's something. Potential universal energy acceleration via red and blue is really cool. Discarding cards is a little bit expensive, um, but I do think this card definitely has potential to see play. Again, because you have um, that tag whistle, just means you can pull these out at the right time and get value from them. I think this card is very, very strong. I think overall potentially the strongest of the tag team supporters. I think all of them are, I think Cynthia and Red and Blue, these are the two strongest ones. And then Mallow and Guzma might be like just one-offs if you're playing heavy tag whistle in your deck um, because they're situationally pretty helpful. We have an amazing stadium. I was so hyped to read this stadium. This is such a cool idea from Pokemon. It's called Chaotic Swell. When either player plays a new stadium card from their hand to discard this stadium, discard the new stadium card as well. So essentially, this is one card for two stadium bounces. You initially bounce your opponent's stadium uh, by putting this into play, and then your opponent, if they want to put their own stadium in, it gets sucked in by the chaotic swell. So you essentially empty the field of stadiums uh, when this is bounced, which is so cool. It means now if you're a deck that's worried about some specific stadium cards, um, like Lysander Labs or Power Plant or something like that, you could add in one Chaotic Swell, and it means in that matchup when you're up against a stadium that you don't like to see, you can two for one them, essentially win the stadium war, which is really insane. So, 
yes, there are stadiums that will benefit you more throughout the game, and Chaotic Swell is purely a removal stadium, but it's two removals in one, and that's just very, very strong. So definitely something to bear in mind. And even if you're up against a matchup where it's not good for you, you can still just deny your opponent finding a stadium, right? Because they can only play when one stadium a turn. So if you even just start off the game by putting Celtic Swell into play just to like thin your deck or whatever, your opponent's first stadium is basically negated and you make them draw another one the following turn. So yeah, really, really strong stadium card. Amazing for removal and amazing for just disrupting your opponent's initial setup. Think about how important it is for Reshizard and Mewtwo decks to get that initial uh, giant hearth going. Um, if you just put a Chaotic Swell down turn one, you just say, well, your first half is useless. You have to wait a turn to get your Welder combos rolling. So that's really insane. We have some new artworks uh, for some good trainers, but we're going to head our way back to the top and go through some of these Pokemon. There aren't many that really stuck out to me. Uh, we have a few new fossil Pokemon. Cradilly is a stage two that says if your opponent's Pokemon is affected by a special condition, it cannot retreat. There aren't many good, well, there aren't any good fossils that uh, inflict status, so I think that's going to be a little bit too niche. There's a Krikatoon, which is essentially a light version of Gramble. Uh, you can do 30 plus 100 more if you have one card in your hand. If you have three cards in your hand, you can confuse the opponent's active, and when you have six in hand, you can do 30 to each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. That's a pretty dangerous snipe. Um, 30 and 30 to all of your opponent's bench at once for one energy. It's actually a pretty good spread, um, but it's going to be difficult to navigate getting six cards in your hand at any one time. It's not comparable to Gramble in terms of damage output, so it's not worth it to go down to like that one card hand. Um, but I like the versatility of this card. I like that you can have different stages, and um, that's the fun aspect of this guy, but I think he will only be a fun kind of card. Um, we have a Buzzwall. Uh, we always like to look at baby Buzzwalls. It's a 130 hit point grass type Ultra Beast this time, uh, with the ability... Beast Burst. This Pokemon's attacks do 20 more damage for each... Uh, sorry, to your opponent's active for each prize card you have taken before applying Weakness and Resistance. So it's essentially the same ability as that tool card that we saw, the Beastite. Um, so if you have both of them in combination with one another, essentially for each prize you take, this Buzzwall is doing an extra 30 damage, which is really dangerous. It means he can cap out, I, I believe, 240 um, if you have beast energy attached and you have one prize remaining. So uh, the downside is touchdown is a pretty trash attack uh, for psychic colors You do 60 and heal 30 from yourself um, I think he had to be one energy to be useful to be honest. So I think he's actually pretty poor Volcarona GX is insane uh, I'm really happy to see this card released. Uh, it's more help for fire types, but I think it's in a different way in many cases um, but Man, I was a huge fan of Decidueye, and now we're getting in, getting this in a Fire-type Stage 1 form. Whoa, that's insane. We get Scorching Bomb as an ability. Once during your turn, you may discard a Fire Energy from your hand. If you do, put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. That's stackable, so it's literally the same as Decidueye, except you have to pay a Fire to do so. You don't care about paying Fire Energies, you have um, Victini Prism Star, as we know, and you also have Fire Crystal, so we can make this happen. Oh, and even uh, Giant Hearth. So, this is happening a lot, uh, and it will be spammed. I think Volcarona, for this ability alone, is good enough as a quad Volcarona. This is a new deck. We just play 4 Welder, 4 Red Blue, uh, to give us enough energy acceleration for our attacks, and then we just have like a bunch of Fire Crystals, uh, maybe some non-GX Fire stuff in there as well. Because I think Scorching Bomb is worth completely building around. I think this card can definitely be like a 1-1 or a 2-2 line in things like Ability Zard as well. Um, just to give you some supplementary damage. Um, so that things like uh, your 230 damage, um, what's it called, Flare Strike, can now knock out things like Picaroms. Um, or you could like stack them up to even knock out like Reshi's Arts and stuff. So I think this card is going to be great as a bench sitter alone in Fire Decks. But I also think he could be the front runner in his own archetype by playing a 4-4 line. Um, because Black Fire does 160 and you return two Fire Energy from this Pokemon to your hand. Now returning two Fire Energy to your hand is not necessarily a downside because you have your own abilities. But it is a little bit awkward. It will probably mean that you have to play multiple Welders and stuff. Uh, red blue could be additional energy acceleration don't forget and consistency buffing by helping you get these guys into play um, it even thins the deck of energies for you so i think 
that's just all coming together like so easily. Um, you can put those two fire energy back into your hand, so you can do like a nine tails play next turn as well for trapping things if you're going to be some sort of like uh, trap and sort of ping kind of deck. Uh, but 160 is great vanilla damage output. It's good enough to knock out every non GX. Um, with one ping, you're able to knock out things like the Cephalon. Two pings, you can knock out things like Ultra Necrozma and Heatran. And essentially, you're just going to try and flood the board with these Volcaronas and make them um, do some pretty nasty stuff. So, yeah, I think this could be a straight up archetype. Like, Decidueye was able to work, it was a stage two, and you just had things like Tapu Lele swinging with like DCE and stuff throughout the entire game. So, I don't see why this can't work. It also has a GX attack called Great Heat Wave. Discard an energy from each of your opponent's Pokemon. So, it's similar to the Gyarados GX attack, I want to say, from Crimson Invasion. Um, it's fine, uh, why not? If you're trying to, again, buy yourself free turns, basically, this deck has inevitable win condition, right? The more turns you have in the game, the more Scorching Bombs you do, the more often you will win. So, being able to buy yourself a turn sometimes with Great Heat Wave is just worth it sometimes, so that seems pretty reasonable to me. Uh, we have a Pyroar that's not all that interesting. We have an upgrade of an Alolan Vulpix because it has the ability snowed in. As long as this is on your bench, it takes no damage from attacks. So as long as you're not playing Fairy Pokemon, uh, this is the superior option. Um, we have a Glalie, which isn't all that exciting. We have a Walrein that is one energy um, trainer lock. Uh, it's a 160 hit point whale, stage two. For one water, you do 60. Your opponent can't play trainers from the hand during the next turn. You can't use this attack uh, if any of your Pokemon used Cold Wave during your last turn. So you can't just sit there in Cold Wave the whole time. Um, but every now and then, you can enforce Trainer Lock on the opponent. And this doesn't say item, it says Trainer right now by how it's translated. So I imagine it's similar to the Dark Cry and Umbreon's GX attack in terms of disruption, um, but I think ultimately it won't be worth building around for the most part. It's too difficult to get this guy up, his damage output's not strong enough, etc. There's a Black Kiram, which I think is actually pretty uh, interesting. It's a 130 hit point basic that has Blizzard Wings for two colorless. You do 30, discard a special energy from your opponent's active. Uh, again, the only good special energy right now is Triple Acceleration, which discards itself for the most part. Um, discarding recycle energies don't matter, so yeah. But it does have the Blizzard Dust attack. For two water, two colorless, you do 100. If you have a stadium in play, you do 100 more damage. This could be a good Quagnag card. I think Quagnag right now, with the army of Keldios, is only reasonable. Um, one of the big issues is that Keldio can't one-shot some annoying non-GXs. This guy can do that for you. And at the same time, he has enough burst potential to just do 200, which can knock out regular GX Pokemon. Um, it could help you like custom catcher up to Dene or something and finish the game with that guy. Um, obviously, Quagnag's like a good finisher for. Uh, sorry, Quagsire is a good finisher in Quagnag. But this guy can also knock out things like uh, Reshizard as well with weakness. So if Reshizard remains popular, this might be snuck into the Quagnag deck as a nice kind of tech attacker. Lantern has the ability allowing you to look at the top card of your opponent's deck and return it to their deck, just giving you a bit of knowledge. That's not very good. Uh, we have a to Togedemaru getting things into play. We have a Swoobat that can do sniping one for 90, but your opponent chooses where, so that's very awful. Uh, we have a Golurk that can do 160 for two, uh, but if you have any supporter in your discard pile, you can't do this, which is terrible. You have no idea. Um, what else do we have? We have an Oracorio GX. I actually think this card is very good. Uh, it's a 160 hit point, uh, sorry, 170 hit point Psychic Basic that has the dedicated dance ability. Once during your turn, if one of your Pokemon was knocked out during your opponent's last turn, you may draw three cards, uh, and you can't use more than one dedicated dance ability per turn. When this was first translated, there wasn't that second line of text. I thought this card was absolutely immense, uh, but they have added in this thing where you can't stack dedicated dances. But it's essentially a mini version of Persian, right? It, uh, Persian allows you to catwalk for any two cards, only when GXs get knocked out. Oracorio is more versatile. Uh, it doesn't have to be a GX that gets knocked out, which means potentially you can get more uses of dedicated dance. And draw three is just pretty good, right? Um, also, this is treasurable and a basic. So you can cherish ball this card, you can treasure this card, and essentially when one of your guys gets knocked out, you get an extra push of cards, which 
Sounds really good to me. Um, again, it feels like something like Abilities Art could try and play. It's very reliant on Dede changing a lot of the time. This could be like one other way that you could draw additional cards, especially with like your Jirachis that sometimes sit in the active or like using non-GXs like Turtonator or Heatran. That could be amazing. I think Malamar could maybe even add this into their decks as well. Uh, the Malamar deck is crying out for more consistency. And being able to treasure this guy when a Giratina gets knocked out, put him into play, and just uh, draw some extra cards to get you like your next Malamar pieces or whatever else could be really nice for you. Um, so something to bear in mind. It is obviously a GX Pokemon, which is a bit um, concerning for non-GX decks. I mean, you want this to be in a non-GX deck so you get as many uses as possible out of Dedicated Dance but it does end up becoming a GX on your board. But I think this definitely has potential just because of how searchable this card is with the Cherishes and the uh, and the thingamajig. You've got also Strafe, which is a reasonable GX attack. You do 100 and switch to the bench. Um, usually there are better GX attacks out there, especially for like psychic attacking decks, but this could force a non-GX into the active and uh, make them have Gust, I guess, which is pretty reasonable. Uh, we've got some funky Lunala and Solgaleo stuff going on, but they both require like them both to be in play for their abilities to work, so I'm just going to skip past them because that sounds like way too much work. Um, we have a very interesting Flygon. I'm a huge Flygon fan, always have been in the TCG. They normally make interesting copies of him. He's a 240 hit point stage 2 fighting type that has the ability Sandstorm Protection. As long as this Pokemon is your active, any damage done to your Pokemon from your opponent's attacks is reduced by 30 after applying Weakness and Resistance. So that's pretty nice. Um, you're now effectively a 270 hit point stage two, which is pretty tanky. It does have two attacks, both with some fairly hefty attack costs for uh, three fighting. You do Desert Hurricane, which is 120. If there's a stadium, you do 120 more damage and then discard that card. Um, so 240, again, it's a good output. Uh, you can go up to 260 with um, Diancy Prism Star. You can even go up to 270 with the Martial Arts Dojo. Um, I believe you calculate the damage before you discard the stadium, so that probably would work. I think that's how it would work anyway. Um, so you can do 270 quite easily with this guy, um, which is pretty nice. And if you're behind, which you probably will be as a stage 2, you can do even more. Um, so this definitely has damage output to fall back on. You can try and use Black Belt to have a little bit less energy cost. Still pricey, but I think you might be able to get away with it. Um, so I think his damage output is actually there. He's a lot of work and you do get very uh, worried when they do get one shot, but hopefully 270 is enough to put things a little bit out of range for a lot of the time. Uh, there's also the Sonic Edge GX attack, which is 220. Um, and it's not affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon, so it can get through some annoying walls, which is pretty nice. And again, you have the damage modifiers out there for fighting types, which is pretty cool. I think overall, probably too expensive in the, of an attacker, especially because it's a stage 2 as well. So you have to kit your deck out with a bunch of stadiums, a bunch of tools, a bunch of energy, and stage 2s. That's just too much clutter for the deck to be consistent, so that's going to be... A no from me. We have an Armaldo, which has 50 more for each unified fossil in your discard pile. So it's maybe this sort of deck that's trying to um, make the most out of um, that new research lab stadium. Um, you could potentially be doing um, 220 base if you're just um, stadium out, uh, using stadium to get these guys out. Again, he could use Black Belt. Oh no, he can't use Black Belt. He could use Counter Gain though, I guess. Uh, count gain energy uh, to get going with Ancient Blast. Maybe there's something there. Uh, it's a powerful fighting type nonetheless. Um, we have an interesting Lycan Rock. It's a 120 hit point stage 1 that has the ability Boiling Blood. If your opponent has any GX Pokemon in play, the energy cost for this Pokemon's attacks is reduced by 3 colorless. So essentially it can attack for free with Voltage Claw. You do 60, which is terrible. 60 for, for 0 isn't even that good on a stage 1. And if your opponent's active, has any special energy attached, this does 70 more damage. Let's face it, special energy suck right now, so Voltage Claw um, is probably just doing that base 60. Yes, he's a fighting type, so you can try and use like Dojo and Diancy. Um, if you do have either of those in play, um, you are able to... Oh no, sorry, you need the... Yeah, you need Diancy in play to one-shot um, the Denes with weakness, um, which isn't fantastic. So I think, although he is a fighting type that can attack for free his output is so low that he's not he's probably not that splashable or very good um we have 
Uh, it might have more applications in expanded though. This seems like a really good expanded type card. You could like attack for three uh, for free and knock out like a Zoroark or something with a non-GX. That sounds pretty good. Um, we have a Palisand, which is poor. We have a Metal Alolan Sandslash, which isn't doing much. We have that Funky Solgaleo. This is one of the last interesting cards I think we have. A low in nine tails has dust blow for a zero energy attack cost. So for free, you can do ten times the amount of um, Pokemon tools in your discard pile. So it's a fairy type, uh, which is awesome because it means you can try and kit your deck out with a bunch of annoying fairy charms and say, "Well, this nine tails is going to be an annoying wall for you." It's going to just sit there, do whatever, and in every matchup where the other tools are useless, like if you're not against an Ultra Beast, you just bin all of those as best you can with a bunch of Hapus and all that other stuff. You don't need any energy in your entire deck. You can just play a Ninetales line and then whatever else you want um, and make life very awkward for your opponent. If you want to, you can play the um, combo of the um, Change Clothes Magina plus the... Uh, the Charmed Charm Tapu Fini. Oh no, it's a Tapu Lele, right? It's a Tapu Lele, and you can be like confusing people each turn uh, just because you're going to be playing like probably 16 or so fairy charms in your deck and then probably another like eight or so other tools in your list. Um, so Dust Blow probably is going to be looking towards that two shot mark because you can't fill your deck with more than like 20 tools, I would say. Um, but if you're able to knock out like regular GXs whilst also walling with um, your fairy charms, this could be a pretty fun rogue. I think overall it's kind of like um, a Rotom deck in disguise in many ways, um, which isn't all that great. The good news is like if you're up against evolutions, getting six tools in your discard pile really isn't that hard, so you can like get early dust blow pressure, I guess. Um, but I think overall it's probably going to be more of a gimmick deck, but definitely one I'll be trying for sure, because it sounds like a lot of fun. You can also play the um, an other Aloha Ninetales, the fairy one, which is just a wall as well if you need to, uh, which is cool. It could like surprise people and close out games that way. We have an Azuril, which is surprisingly pretty reasonable, I think. It's a 60 hit point free retreating basic with one of these little baby abilities that they've been giving us recently. Rapid charge allows you to, once during a turn, flip a coin if heads attach a basic energy from your discard to your active Pokemon. And then if you use this ability, your turn ends. So um, your turn is always ending, which isn't great, but this is some much needed energy acceleration for some cards that have like no acceleration at all, or even decks that do have acceleration that could just use an extra bit of help here and there. So often, things like Picaron will pass their first turn just because they aren't able to full blitz on turn one. Well, why don't you just try and end your turn on as Uril instead and get an extra energy in play? Even if it's not on your attacking Pokemon, it can help you Zero Aura pivot and it can help you energy switch towards your Picaron for turn two. It's like you found a Tapu Koko Prism, really, if you flip heads on this guy. And it's a free retreat pivot, which is actually pretty cool. Think about something like the Keldeo deck. Uh, you can't attack till turn three. Uh, with Keldeo, with Azuril flipping heads on turn one, that can change everything. So it's similar to like the Munchlax that we saw in the uh, quad Keldeo decks. We could start seeing Azuril um, in decks like that, so you can actually attack on turn two, which is actually pretty hilarious. Um, who knows, this may even end up going into something like Malamar, <laughs> because you don't trust yourself to actually get Malamars on turn um, two. You can instead go for a rapid charge. I don't know. Th this card will have some applications, I think. Yes, of flipping coins. Yes, it forces you to end your turn. But a lot of the time with these big tag team decks right now, we're sort of building up like a five or six energy attack on the bench and just until we're ready to find our gusting pieces or something, you just kind of pass into your opponent. So, yeah, something tells me this card might be reasonable. <laughs> Maybe I'm pipe dreaming. Maybe I'm believing in the coin flips too much. We have a very boring Floet and Florgus uh, flower picking. Uh, when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve, you may choose a card in your opponent's hand. Your opponent reveals that card and shuffles it into their deck. Uh, so it, it's it's worded strangely. Um, it says choose a card from your opponent's hand and then your opponent reveals it. So that tells me that it's probably choose a card at random. Um, so just pluck a random card out of their hand, which is pretty bad for stage one. But you also have the follow-up stage two, which might be worth playing. Um, it has the same thing. When you evolve, you may choose two cards in your opponent's hand. Then they reveal those cards and shuffle them into their deck. So I think they should be random. I think it's just worded poorly. 
Um, but yeah, more and more hand disruption is what we're getting. Handlock is being pushed so much in the TCG right now. With Jesse James wheezing and now a full stage 2 Florgus line, I'm certain that there's going to be decks out there that can get your opponent to zero card hands super easily. And it's going to be down to those decks that have their own Pidgeotos, Salazzles, and Jirachis to get yourself out of that mess. Um, so I think otherwise you're you're in so much trouble. <laughs> uh, there's too many handlock cards right now that a deck can definitely be formed around that sort of style. Um, we have Slurpuff, which is pretty bad. We have um, we have a Sylveon that's not that great either. We have Arceus and Dialga and Palkia, the poster boys of this set. It's another trio of um, what's it called? Legendaries. It's a 280 hit point dragon type that has the first attack ultimate ray for water metal colorless. You do 150 and search your deck for up to three basic energy cards and attach them to your Pokemon in any way that you like. So it's full blitz. Um, make no mistake about it. It's back. Um, why is this worse than full blitz? Well, because it has an annoying energy cost and you don't have Tapu Koko Prism Star to help you get there, unless you want that to be your colorless cost. Um, so that's pretty ugly. Um, it does benefit from the Ends Resolve supporter. Is it called Ends Resolve? I can't remember what it's called, because this is a dragon type, right? So maybe that's how you get him working with Ultimate we uh, Ray. Who knows? Maybe this is even more consistent than uh, Pika Roma getting the turn one energy acceleration attack off. Um, but yeah, getting more energies into play, it sounds awesome. It's GX attack has altered creation GX. For the rest of this game, your Pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So you effectively have like an invisible choice band on everything, uh, even non-GXs for the rest of the game, which is pretty nuts. That's just for one metal. You can just do that straight out the gate. So maybe it doesn't even matter that you can't ultimate Ray on turn one because you'll oftentimes go for altered creation GX instead. It also has, if this has an extra water energy attached, in addition to the, the uh, metal energy, your opponent's active is knocked out. Oh, sorry, when your opponent's active is knocked out by damage from those attacks, uh, take one more prize card. When it says those attacks, I think it means like the attacks that you're doing that have 30 more damage, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's essentially turning all of your knockouts into... Um, what's it called? Um, knockouts from a Sable Tar, right? Uh, I think that's how it's read, because um, the attack itself doesn't do any damage, so there's no way you can knock something out with this attack. It's saying, you're doing 30 more damage, and if you take knockouts of those attacks, take additional prizes. And if that's the case, that's super scary. That is really scary. You have energy acceleration to power up some one-shot guys, and those guys will be one-shotting and taking additional prize cards. It's like a different way of playing Dark Box in many ways. Sable Tar is a huge selling point in Dark Box because you can catch up with taking additional prizes on knockouts. And this guy can do the same thing by the looks of things if you have a Metal and Water attached when you use the Altered Creation GX attack, which sounds super good. So it's going to be interesting to see how that's built. We have another Dragon-type um, tag team from this set. It's an Ultra Beast tag team, Naganadel and Guzzlord GX. 280 hit points with the ability Gluttony. Once during a turn, you may discard a Pokemon from your hand if you do heal 60 from this Pokemon. That's really nice. 280 hit points is already obviously very fat, and um, being able to heal additionally is really annoying for non-GX decks trying to like two-shot you. You keep them at like three or four shot range, which is disgusting. You have for Psychic Dark Colorless uh, Jet Pierce which does 180. Good vanilla damage output, not bad at all. And we do have the Chaos Order GX attack. For a colorless, you flip over your prize cards, um, so you effectively do town map for one colorless. If this has at least one extra psychic and dark attached, so essentially the same cost as the um, Jet Pierce attack, you're able to take two prize cards. So you will flip over those prizes, see what they are, Choose the two that you want and carry on with the game. That's pretty nice. A guaranteed uh, knockout, basically, on a GX Pokemon, uh, essentially, is how it reads, essentially. But you're not really affecting your opponent's board state. You're just racing for prizes. Um, but you're also able to accumulate two of the best cards from, like, your six or four prizes remaining or something like that, which is pretty cool. I think, overall, um, he's going to be a real pain to get around for non-GX decks. And if they are a thing, he'll be good. Um, but I think ultimately we're in too much of a tag team format. His damage output's not strong enough in my book, so yeah. 
Um, we have a Drampa, which isn't all that good. We have a Jangmo. Hakamoo has an ability that allows you to evolve straight away if your opponent has any GXs or EXs into play, but it's not worth it because Komoo isn't all that good. It can do uh, 180 for two if you discard a tool from the sky, but that's really not all that strong at all, to be honest. We have an Ultra Necrozma. It has the ability Ultra Burst. This Pokemon can only attack if your opponent has two or fewer prize cards remaining. So it's a late game non-GX kind of sweeper card. It's a Dragon type Ultra Beast and it has 170 damage for Psychic Metal and you discard an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. 170 is not the best output. Maybe you can Grinch something like a Dedenne or something, but overall I think this card is probably way too niche. Uh, to see play. If you're towards that point in the game and you're something like Malamar, you probably want to use Sky Scorching Light anyway with the big guy. You probably don't want to be using this guy. It's not that much better than just using like a Tino with a spell tag. It's basically the same thing. So yeah. Um, we have Mega Lopany and Jigglypuff, a very unlikely tag team, but here we are. It's a 240 hit points colorless with the jumping balloon attack for three colorless energies. You do 60 and 60 more for each of your opponent's EX and GX Pokemon. I think overall that's not all that strong. Yes, there are plenty of archetypes out there playing a bunch of um, GXs and EXs. Maybe this is like a mirror tech for something like Pika Rom. Uh, but overall, I think it's a little bit niche. Uh, we do have the Puff Smasher GX attack. For a colorless, your opponent's active is now asleep. If this has at least four extra energy attached, you do 200 to one of your opponent's bench. That's a huge snipe. It's basically the same as doing a Meganadel snipe, right? For your... Um, Five energies, is it? Does it need five energies? Yeah, for five energies, you do a 200 snipe and leave the opponent's active sleeping. Um, it's not fantastic. Obviously, 200 is a good amount of damage to snipe with, but it's very expensive overall. The good news for this is it's colorless, so similar to like Eevee Lax, you have all sorts of energy acceleration uh, options available to actually get these things going. Jumping Balloon is actually pretty scary if you're playing the right matchups, so may who knows? Maybe this is a tackable card if uh, you're playing Energy Acceleration in your own deck. Something to bear in mind. Um, we have an Eevee that doesn't have Energy Evolution, which is annoying. Um, we have not much else here. I think we're getting towards the Dreg pile. Um, yeah, it looks like that's it. We have Artwork Appreciation for Heliolisk. That's about it. And it's a colorless one, which might be the first time. But yeah, that is going to be it, guys. That is my summary of SM12 Alter Genesis. Let me know what your favorite cards are of this set. Let me know if I made any mistakes on any cards. And also let me know if I missed anything altogether. I'll try and catch up in the comments below. Look over these cards an extra time. And um, yeah, give my thoughts down there. So thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you tomorrow for another video. Cheers. Oop, I've lost my mouse. There it is. See you later. <laughs>